not only has it been felt, but it's now officially recognized. Um, how does it feel to finally get this award? Well, I'm past the point of feeling strange about it, although I still think it's kind of odd that the kind of movies I made wound up historically as significant as they seem to have happened. happened. I, it's, uh, it's, it's a, I think, a wonderful, wonderful kind of thing for me. I'm not sure how wonderful it is for the film industry, but if your question is what's my personal reaction to it, it's one of just pure pleasure. Now, where do you think, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, the film industry. Where do you, you know, in, in raising the bar, mm -hmm. what, in your opinion, you think where does the bar, where does it go from here? Well, that's an that's a fascinating question, and it's one that's going to be very hard to answer, starting right now. And I'll tell you why. Most of the walls have have crumbled. Most of the inhibitions have disappeared. If you go back, not just maybe one generation, four-letter words were very very tough to insert in a script. Nudity, maybe for specialty pictures that played in specialty houses. Today, frontal nudity, so what? So what is the next step? The next step is what we see in privately shot pictures that, that sometimes uh, lead to arrests. And I will tell you that within another generation that will no longer lead to arrests because we, we sit here watching the bar crumble as we, even as we raise it higher. There is nothing left to the imagination. So in order for a film today, to grab and shake an audience. It's no longer, and here we are a couple of years after morphing. And now, it, oh yeah, so what? So the, the guy turned into a house and the, the Quicksilver turned into a man, so what? People are no longer startled. To be able to startle people now requires more than just raw imagination. It requires an understanding of human psychology, which a lot of film people don't care about. I won't say they don't know it, they don't care about it because they are trapped in their own personal histories. The other problem is that those who don't have that personal history are coming up in a, in a, a videotape generation in which anybody can be a film producer. And out of any seven people you pass on the street, five are making a movie. And these movies are formulaic in that handheld camera, plot well, I know what we're going to do, and so on. Usually friends, primarily school friends or whatever. And these are films that occasionally will make it into, I'll call it, minimal distribution. A little more mud in the water. To get a film that really gets distributed today, and people are scared uh, on, the, on the big levels as well they should be, because here are hundred million dollar movies that are dying, and uh, here's one that cost 120 million and grossed 11, which is not what I would call the kingdom of heaven in filmmaking. So people say, I can do better than that, and off they go with their video cameras. How are they going to get somebody to pay attention to their picture? They have very few options. They can, one, try to go beyond the limits of startling, in which they say, well, here, well, look what I did. Or they can say, I always want to make a movie. In both cases, they are doing no good to either the film, I'll call it industry, or themselves, because they are making it a little more difficult for anybody else who wants to come in with a genuine idea. Here's a movie called March of the Penguins, narrated, by the way, by Morgan Freeman. Who would have thought to have Morgan Freeman narrate a movie on penguins? Picture is a smash hit. Here's a movie called The Island. Who's in it? Scarlett Johansson, the guy with the big lips, who uh, died. That it had star value, that it had production value, meant nothing whatever because people said there's nothing there that I want to see. So more than ever, we have blogs, we have emails, we have websites, we have confusion, and the word of mouth is no longer the first crowd coming out of a theater on a Friday night. The word of mouth begins before a movie is even finished. Oh, they had fights on the set, and this and that, and they had to cut these scenes out. And the movie can be made or doomed before it ever begins. There was a time when a Disney company could buy a gross 
the last time they did that, I believe, was The Lion King. Mm -hmm. Spending a lot of money on television, marketing to a vertical audience, that is, children primarily, or families with a G-rated picture, and now Disney knows very well, except for Pixar, which they had to merge with because they could not make it on their own anymore with G-rated pictures. They felt that they had the market locked. They don't. Nobody has the market locked, and the market itself is shifting, and sometimes you go into a movie that's an R-rated picture, and here are a bunch of 10, 12, 13-year-olds in there hooting and hollering. So it's a different... The, the, the alertness to what people will go to see, whether in their own living rooms or in a theater, is a factor that I think more people in our business should be attending to. Now you mentioned uh, the internet, blogs, uh, email, but what about actually distributing your, or, or having your audience be the internet? How do you feel that's going to impact uh, films in the future, especially as we get uh, wider and wider bandwidth, we're able to actually push out an entire film, feature length film, onto the internet for the world to see. Now what do you think about that? I think that's the future. I think the future lies in two directions. The immediate future lies in satellite transmission of images, which means that prints will become semi-non-existent. Here's a Harry Potter movie that opens with 1,700 long 35 millimeter color prints for theaters. That's it. And if I, if <laughs> all the movies I made together with all the prints couldn't begin to maybe one twentieth of that, what the prints cost. Now, in the projection room, they simply pick it off the wire. At the end of the week when they're through with a the run, they delete it and go, go to something else. There is no print at all. It all comes in by satellite. But as the web gains the capability of high definition imagery with bandwidth and with memory capability to make it possible to screen films on the web, it's my opinion that some of the day's successes, like Netflix, should be looking very heavily into that, because that is the future of distribution. Now, since it is the future of distribution, that means that the, the capability of product availability is gigantic. And where we may have X hundreds of pictures coming from India or someplace today, it could be in the thousands. Just as if people who are old enough remember back when most towns had one TV station. Now you, here's cable. Oh, you mean you only get 200 channels on yours? What's wrong with the boy? Oh boy, you've got a rotten deal there. And yes, out of the 200 channels, chances are there's nothing to watch. But there are 200 channels, which means there's that many more choices available. The major television networks no longer have command of, of audiences. Here's ESPN, which often will outgrow, outpull in terms of total audience, ABC, NBC, or CBS, or Fox. Here's the Fox Network, which was nothing. Suddenly they got the number one show. And what is the show? It's a reality kind of show. And the reality kind of show sets a different tone in which people expect others to take their pants off, <laughs> perhaps literally, in order to gain attention, which is the only way you can do it on that kind of a show. So the capability of the medium as it expands means that the, the availability to both dilettantes and professionals will be just gigantic. Whether they'll make any money at it in that competitive a situation, that's a different story altogether. But there's a lot, that, it means mud in the water. What's the title of your movie again? Uh, oh, did I see that? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then finally, uh, what do you think about Texas Friday Night Weekend? What do you think about this particular venue? This is one of the nicest things of this type that I've ever been to. Uh, Lloyd Cryer and, and his wife have really put themselves out. Not only that, but they have organized this where things start on time, which is an absolute miracle in, in horror film festivals. The caliber of people attending is a huge cut above that at, at most of these festivals of this type. They've made it very pleasant for the guests. If they ever invite me back, I'll say yes in a minute. Excellent. And I can tell you there are others I would not say that to.
Thank you very much for your time. The pleasure was mine.